for a brand new episode of The Witching Hour. You know me, you know Haley, but right now we are talking to the filmmakers behind Save Yourselves, Alex H. Fisher and Eleanor Wilson. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. We're good. Thanks yeah. for having us. Thank you. Thank we're you very, for joining us. We're very, very excited to have you here. Um, just so our viewers and uh, our listeners get to know you guys a little bit more, I kind of wanted to go back to the beginning, at least to start here. And I was wondering, what kind of films were the two of you watching when you were growing up? And do you mm. find that they have influenced what you tend to gravitate towards as creators now? Yeah, Tommy Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I never saw Tommy Boy. Alex showed She's it still to me. She's still never seen it. Well, we started watching it. And yeah, I was but it like, was a weird... I don't know about this. Uh, <laughs> a weird black and white VHS copy that we got from Kentucker Oddly. And yeah. it was like, it was black and white. It, did, it wasn't the same, but it, all she saw was like little Tommy running behind the bus and saying, holy shnikes. And she was like, I'm out. <laughs> I was like, no, you've got to stick it is, with it. It is weird that that wasn't a movie that I saw growing up because like there was many many others my brother had an amazing VHS collection and we definitely watched a lot of Polly Shore yeah um, yeah a lot of those Ace Ventura yeah a those lot of high concept silly comedies and yeah. that's kind of what we've been gravitating towards again lately yeah it's just like revisiting all those things Drop Dead Fred was a, a big favorite growing up which I hadn't seen until recently. And also um, um, Yahoo Serious movies, which were new to me as well. Do you guys know Yahoo Serious? I do not know that. Australian, oh my God. Australian filmmaker who we made just, these three um, really big uh, silly comedies. They're beautiful. Young Einstein is his first one, which I think is the best. And yeah, it's a, it's, it's a great watch. They're spectacular. We just sort of wrote an essay about him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you He's just right. saw uh, Drop Dead Fred for the first time as an adult? Yeah, yeah. What was that like? I, it was fantastic. I was like, oh, th this movie, yeah, this movie's great. It's like, uh, I don't know, when you're a kid, you probably miss like the subtext maybe. Like you're like, you just think about the, the, the silly, the, you know, the character in the head or whatever. Or, and then, yeah. so I was watching and I was like, what a beautiful metaphor about mental health. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was obsessed with it that. Is. It's such a good you movie. Were. Have oh, you seen totally. it as an adult? Yeah. No, I had imagined it wouldn't hold up at all, but I it, think you've inspired it does. me. <laughs> yeah, you wow. should watch it yeah. again. It's really fun and really touching, actually. Yeah. 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 And like Dirty Dancing, we watched. Like, yeah. we, we've been watching a bunch of old movies, like older movies, because it's really sad all the time. So, <laughs> so we just like, we watch, we've been watching. Movies. Dirty Dancing is like just a beautiful and important that's film. A, I had no idea. Perfect movie. I, I had watched it a bunch as a, you know, growing up and then. Didn't realize that it was about abortion rights. Yeah. And like, you know, <laughs> using your privilege for, you know, all this, all this stuff yeah. that like we care about now. And it's doing all of that in 1980, whatever. Yeah. You guys are, uh, you're keeping busy over there with some good stuff. I like this, I like this uh, filmography you're going through here. We're doing the important work. Yeah. <laughs> that it is. What about, what about for you two as creators together? I'm, I'm, like, when, when did you realize that your sensibilities kind of like clicked and balanced in a way that you can actually make a feature film together? I mean, I think a lot of that just comes from the types of movies that we like, right? You know, like if you're aligned on the thing, you know, and liking movies together, you kind of know that you're going to be aligned on on making a movie. And I, 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 a lot of like our early courtship was um, yeah. was watching movies. Obviously, you know, we we live yeah. in New York and we go to the Nighthawk a lot, and um, we saw think, Carol together on one of our first that's dates. True, we did, yeah. Uh, but the yeah, I think just sort of watching movies and then talking about them afterwards and realizing that we had really very similar feelings about everything um, kind of made it seem like, okay, we're, we're pretty aligned. We could probably do this together. I was really complimented early in uh, the, the dating when um, Eleanor was like, do you want to watch the Oscars with me? Because I think you'd be fun to watch them with. Oh, like did we, I say that? Because we would like make yeah you did make it fun was, of the same we would like things. make fun of the same stupid <laughs> same stupid things yeah. and i was like oh that means that means a lot how did you go from like knowing that you guys had like compatible movie tastes and could do it together to actually landing on what you wanted that first film to be 
Uh, it was really the, the film idea that came first. I yeah. mean, we weren't like looking for a project together or anything. It yeah. was just that I had this idea, which was just, you know, really just the basic premise of like a couple goes upstate, turn off their phones, aliens attack. And I told that to Alex and he thought it was funny. Yeah. And I was like, that's a perfect, it's just like a perfect metaphor. <laughs> I was like, this, this uh, New York couple is like oblivious to the world ending and they don't know what to do when it happens. It's like, <laughs> great. It's, just how we live our lives. We make a lot of jokes day. about that. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, and I guess the other thing was that we had, um, we had worked together in other capacities. We, you know, both had different kinds of gig jobs that we did. Yeah, freelance and, stuff. We so, hired each other. Like Eleanor was like producing a lot of stuff I was shooting and editing. So we'd hire each other and we like, we got along even, even like during the parts of the relationship where it was like a rocky start. We were still, <laughs> very we were still like, well, do you want to shoot together. this documentary in, in Iceland? And I was like, yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> so we had traveled a lot and, and worked a lot together closely on in particular on like very small crew type situations yeah just the two of us even sometimes yeah, yeah. so um like both shooting and yeah yeah so that kind of i think gave us i guess the confidence to be like we've we've been in situations where we spend a lot of time together and we're working together and going home together and it's like okay well we can probably we can probably do this we did a big we project get sick of each other yeah we did a big project where we traveled around the country making these little documentaries about urban parks mm -hmm. and that like on that travel job it was mostly the two of us sometimes we had a third uh, a dp and that's where we started writing down notes for the idea it's like eleanor had the idea and then we just write down all these moments mm -hmm. so we had all these moments uh stashed away from when we started to write the script. It was it. really, yeah, it was never like a, like, we've got to find the thing to do together. It was just like the idea came, we started riffing on it, it became fun. funny, and then yeah. we we're like, maybe we should write this. And then yeah. we wrote it and it was like, maybe we should try and make this, it's good. And yeah. it just kind of kept like this, each step of the way just kept happening <laughs> like that. By the way, it's not, I, like, and let's try to make it. And then we did. And then yeah, 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 of course there was, from the let's try to make it to it getting made, you know, Hell. Two, two years <laughs> yeah. happened, but um, yeah. yeah. It's I was going to say, you easy. guys make the process sound lovelier than maybe yeah, I've just, ever heard it described. Yeah. <laughs> just come up with a fun thing. idea. I mean, and this is a total it's tangent, really but it's, it's making me think that like the next dating reality show out there should be challenging people to go make movies yes. together. Like, to how, work together. How has yes. Netflix not done that at this point? <laughs> <laughs> Project Greenlight Blind Date. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would genuinely watch that, though. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So we could be the judges. <laughs> and Celine and Logan are they're oh, yeah. married they're they're married and they're direct together. We all need to like call our contacts after this and make this happen. Yeah. 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 So Speed, you, you make it sound easy, of course, but what would you say was, I don't know, the most challenging thing or the biggest hurdle you got over as far as like securing that green light and really feeling hmm. like you were actually gonna make your movie? We were talking about this the other day that if like our memory of um, the green light was never a, a specific point. It yeah, was, it was very hazy. You, it's like a green you, light in the distance that got blurrier as it got closer. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a good metaphor. Um, we, because it's just sort of like a funny thing that, um, I don't know, we, we lived in constant fear or just assumption that it was going to fall apart at every moment. So, yeah. you know, you got, you get costs involved and then you're trying to get some financing and like there's companies that are interested and then they want to change this or that and they drop off and we went through, you know, a bit of a roller coaster of that already. So by the time we met Keshet who did, they were the first um, financing in and found the rest of the financing for us. Um, that, you know, we were just kind of like, oh, yeah, 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 sure, yeah, we'll whatever, goes, we'll, yeah, yeah. we'll believe it when we're on set. Um, but it was just kind of, yeah, like that, that, you know, you never quite exactly know when it's definitely a, a solid thing. And so Alex and I never really celebrated until we, honestly, until the Wrapped, last day of post. post. Yeah. And then we were all of a sudden just had this feeling of like, oh, we actually did it. We actually made a movie. There's just so many things that can go wrong in the yeah. process. You know, there's so many points that you can fail because mm -hmm. it's a very complicated thing with many moving parts, many people involved. And and even if it doesn't fail in one big swoop, it could fail incrementally yeah, throughout right. and just, just end up being like bad. slightly not what you really wanted to make at all. So we were just like, all right, we're going to stick to this. Yeah. And then, but yeah, when, when Post finished that, that last day that we like left the final sound, 
next day and we just walked we were in Williamsburg and we just it was walked raining. down the street. It was raining. We landed at a bar which where wasn't our even open worked. yet. <laughs> yeah, they let us in thankfully because yeah. it was raining outside like, and we were like I think we just finished our movie. Yeah. Like, we ordered some champagne and it was yeah. great. Was really I feel nice. like that bar deserves a special thanks in the credits. Yes, yeah. totally. <laughs> Did you guys have the ultimate rap party when you got to Sundance then? Oh, yeah, yeah we danced was fun. so hard. Yeah, we did. We, also, so many of the crew came to Sundance, which was really cool. It and was and, like and a, two of them were like volunteers at Sundance. Oh, we, yeah. We had like the best crew of all time. Three. Oh, no, Jesse was. It was Jesse, oh, no, no, three. Angelo and. Yeah, Angelo. Yeah. And. Yes. Yeah. yeah, not Jesse. Anyway, no. three, three. Oh, and Zach and Cassidy. Yeah. Were all three of our crew I, yeah. were volunteers. <laughs> yeah. It does matter. Sundance, so they were there anyway. I'm so grateful to the volunteers every time we go to a oh, Exactly. I think about exactly. it every time. They're, I mean, yeah, it was, that was a really fun thing at Sundance, actually, like chatting with the volunteers. And there was, there was a screening that a lot of them came to in Salt Lake City. And yeah, it was nice. Yeah. We had a great party with everybody at, like the mm -hmm. first night of Sundance and every like all the crew who had come were there and even like some of the financiers we had never met were there and yeah John Sunitha and uh the crew our families like our families yeah and the and the on the shoot it was like a it was like a like summer camp or something like we were all upstate and everybody was like really happy to be there we had just like just great Everybody was great vibe. Great vibe, yeah. I just try not to say the word vibe. <laughs> uh, and John, John and Sunitha, uh, like also like just like loved, like everybody loved each other. So they, were, the crew and John and Sunitha were hanging out like every night and every weekend. Like, mm -hmm. and there were activities. It was. It was really nice. So by the time Sundance yeah. came around, we hadn't seen each other in six months, um, and it so was just we like let really, loose. yeah, we did that. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> Had you guys been to Sundance before, or was that like your grand debut? Um, not with a movie. We'd been the year before. Was it two years, two years prior? Because Alex did um, the Sundance Labs for the Screenwriter Lab, the Screenwriter yeah. Lab with another project, and then that happens just before the festival. So he stayed at the festival, and I met him there. Um, so we were there when, like, Sorry to Bother You was playing, and I right. missed um, it because I was not a half hour early for the thing. Like <laughs> so we learned early. our lesson on how you get to yeah, see. We learned how to Sundance. navigate Sundance. But yeah, thank God we did have a bit of a Sundance experience beforehand because it is as you guys know, very overwhelming Insane. and, and yeah. kind of hard to navigate. So we're happy that we, you know, we at least sort of knew the lay of the land of Main Street and um, and how to how to see a movie. Yeah. Sort of a side question off that real quick was, did you guys, since you did know the lay of the land a bit, were you able to sneak in any movies and did you see anything you would recommend? Yeah, well, we, we like did. Six, right? I think we saw six movies in the oh, end. It was okay. difficult because... But, we, but only, we would stay only for the whole the week. We couldn't see anything for the first weekend because our we had too much Press stuff to do, stuff for, to do for our own movie. Um, I loved Summertime. That's yes. cool, right? Um, yeah. Carlos's movie. Carlos Lopez um, Estrada's movie. It's like just so did you see it? <laughs> yes. Oh, it was such it is a so, joy. It's so different. And I walked in having made so many assumptions about why it probably wasn't going to be for me. And then yes. you completely put me wrong. Yeah, it was just beautiful. It's so funny, um, and we cried so, yeah. so much watching that movie. Yeah. I can't remember what else did we see, but I think we oh we saw Cajillionaire. That was obviously yeah, awesome. That was a highlight. Um, what else did we see? Mm. I, I mean, I'm sure that was ten years ago, so we can't. <laughs> yeah, it feels like it. <laughs> Yeah. So how did you come to work with Sue on this? Because I know you wrote the role for her. So when did yeah. it click that she had to be your lead? We, for us from the beginning yeah we right. we kind of we wrote it with her in mind hoping that she would want to do it she's a friend so we had to like it's kind of it's kind of like a it was our first movie and we were kind of like she, we're writing it for her and i hope she wants to do it like <laughs> if she doesn't want to find somebody else uh we didn't show it to her um for a while though we didn't tell her that we wrote it for her until after until we finished shooting i think yeah. but um we, because we don't want to put too much pressure on her. It was just like, okay, well, if you like this, you'll you know, yeah. do it if you, if you want to, but we don't want to make you yeah. feel like you have to do it. Yeah. But uh, we, um, yeah, we definitely, I think it was probably maybe like third or fourth draft that we shared yeah. it with her. And she, I think she knew that we were writing a movie at like our friends, you know, that everyone kind of knows what you're up to a little yeah. bit. Um, but I, I guess she didn't know that we were going to, ask her but I, I think she, she was happy to be asked <laughs> and and I, I've like worked with Sunitha a lot over the years like we went we met in college like 15 years ago uh, freshman year and then 
just been trying to work with her and, and all the comedy people from Emerson are really talented. And uh, she's, she's one of the, she's one of them. And then just, we've been making movies. We made a movie called Snowy Bing Bongs together, which is uh, her comedy dance troupe. It was like an adaptation that my friend Rachel and I made. Uh, and it, we just tried an, every opportunity to work together. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I just called her by her character's name. So you guys did a really good job Ooh. writing a role for her. <laughs> Also, Ooh, I, have yeah. a, I mean, it, I feel like Thad's they, probably yeah. exploding behind the scenes because I know Thad went to Emerson too. Oh, oh really? Yeah, oh, awesome. Oh, well, hang on, Thad. Did we meet you at Sundance? Were you I there? I remember yeah, the I conversation. There. Yeah, yeah. I remember, like, in that interview, we I think we had them like pan to you. Oh, the yes. For a second. Yes, <laughs> that's right. That's right. I, I very much remember this right now after that triple Adam. <laughs> I think I was in the corner, like with my headphones on while you're. Oh, you were there too. <laughs> I, I was like somewhere in the corner. Yeah, that's great. That's funny. That was insane times. It, it mm-hmm. was wild. It was a, it was a good trip that I'm glad we went on. Now that we're stuck. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The last. Oh, we'll trip. get back. We'll get back. <laughs> so you write this role for Sunita, and then you guys were telling me last time that eventually you wound up r- tailoring the Jack role to John. So. What are the different, I guess, like tools and methods you have to use to write a role for each of them? What's like the different different thing that each of them requires? Well, I think um, once we knew that it was going to be John, like once we had approached him and, and talked to him and, and he he liked the script and he was excited about working with Sunitha, um, I think that's when we were like, okay, we've got someone who's like such an incredible physical actor and I I think we sort of started catering the script a little bit more towards like what's going to be really physically funny to see Mm -hmm. Jack do Um, because he's he's very tall (laughs) he's like very lanky has his big expressive hands and um, so just we just knew that it was gonna like the more that we could do kind of physically there so definitely once we knew we had both of them I think things started tweaking to be a bit more like like big and silly in that way Um, because it would just be stupid to not take advantage of that I guess Um, and then it's just like little things we we had a few script conversations with them and in our rehearsal period it's just you know kind of them giving us feedback on what feels weird coming out of their mouths or whatever and and how to kind of like adapt the script a little bit how the relation how the relationship clicked like they Mm -hmm. had a couple notes on that which really helped so like we before the we started shooting we made some like really minor adjustments that sort of set made them a little more real and mm-hmm. and it was all it's all just like these it's like micro tweaks that you and, and then once they're actually saying the dialogue they're a little loose with the exact wording and stuff they you know yeah they have to make freedom. it feel real mm-hmm. yeah this movie has such like a pure tone like a positive lovely energy <laughs> is that something that they were able to pick up in on the script right away. I just feel like a lot of um, these types of movies might be snarkier. Was yeah. that ever something you had to finesse out? We talked about that every step of the way, actually. That was like a, a really important thing and to was- us. Like from when, you know, we wrote the first draft of the script and had people read it, like just, you know, checking in. Did you did you feel like you liked these characters or were you, did you feel like we were making fun of them? And that was very important to us to for it to not just be like these typical like shitty hipsters that we were making fun of that, but you know, they, they are kind of shitty hipsters, but they're also just like us and just like yeah. our friends. And, and I think our idea was that, that if we made them sort of lovable and relatable, then you'd be a little bit more invested in the journey with them rather than, I, I think that the, making fun of hipsters joke would have gotten tired pretty quickly. Yeah, would have, yeah, exactly. And it's funny, like if you were to record yourself and your friends all the time, there's, yeah. we, say, we say dumb shit all the time, you know what I mean? Like, and if you record it, it could be laugh out loud funny. <laughs> Literally so that was, our lives. <laughs> yeah. But we... Um, it's, it's embarrassing. We talked about that definitely with them, like getting that tonally right. And, and that was their big note to us they, too. Yeah, they, they really felt the same way as they were well. They like, this feels like a little mean and mm-hmm. I don't want to be mean to my partner. This was like a little, like little things like that that we talked through. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was that. And then, you know, again, in the edit, we, we finessed that even further. There was mm-hmm. just like... It was not even so much like the like mean spirited or whatever, but it was at a point just dialing in up and down the goofiness, you yeah. know, just like allowing them to have some goofy moments, but not too too many, so that you didn't kind of lose them into 
got to in my end. <laughs> Our editor, Sophie Marshall, was like, like at one point, she was like, we've earned this goofy moment. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> I can't remember what that was, but, but yeah, she's like, pull back here, pull back here, and then you can go yeah. right there. Yeah. So now for your other characters in the movie, why poofs? And did you ever <laughs> toy around with any other alien designs? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is a poof that... It's a um, prototype, no. No, uh, production designer Katie made this for us. It's a bubble the shoot. It's, yeah. <laughs> I feel like uh, you legit manufacture and sell those. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll talk to Katie about it. But, um, there was never another idea. I mean, aside from like when we were very, very early stages of like throwing around ideas, but we were stoned one night, which we don't do very often. This is just like a kind of like special the, occasion. The last time we were stoned. Yeah, like exactly. <laughs> um, we were In like, Colorado. what if yeah. there was like, it was like two aliens, but they thought they were one thing. <laughs> and, I mean, it was just like stupid yeah. stuff like that. But, yeah. um, but when we came up with the poofs, it, it definitely like stuck and, um, and yeah. There was a okay, version of the script off. where the where the early on we were like maybe the poofs could bring them back into their spaceship and uh, show them around at the and be like what do you think of the that was decor like, yeah that was not the <laughs> script that was just that was pre script we didn't like, write that down no no yeah. <laughs> we had all these funny ideas uh, but, yeah the poofs just obviously came out of you know wanting it to be something that could be in the cabin for a while before they realized that it was an alien or yeah. you know just not furniture what could um, look like a piece of furniture and an alien <laughs> yeah um you and then the xenomorph just right away <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes um the so... xenomorph yeah i think yeah i mean you could put your feet up on it but <laughs> <laughs> risky before risky. it hatches yeah yeah we yeah we once we sort of like got going with the proof idea, it became very fun. And, and also like, it became like, you know, just all of a sudden this fun sort of throwback creature movie yeah. that's, you know, obviously referential of, of critters and tribbles and, and things like that, which was exciting to us that it could be something that lends itself to a practical approach. Um, yeah. Like and, growing up with those movies and then, and then like, getting like being able to do those practical effects and having having something that feels like it's in the, it's the same family a little bit was was like a real appeal for us and and even though it's funny because it looks it looks like a more like a tribble or a critter but it like the way we sh the biggest in inspiration for how it moved was the face hugger from aliens it was like <laughs> that that was like like the tricks that they used in that that's like what we studied to mm -hmm. to make the poof move Whereas tribbles, you could just just hold them and and drop them, or like, yeah. like make somebody like drop a bunch of them from out of the screen. Yeah. <laughs> what about? Uh, so we are going to move on to spoilers soon. Hey, okay. Haley, let me know how much more non-spoiler stuff you have before we pull that trigger. But <laughs> I want to know about the the cabin location. Where yeah. where did you wind up finding that? Because I feel like movie or not, there's just something like stunning and very visual appeal, visually appealing about how that whole house is set up and everything in it. Yes, we were so lucky. We lucked out because. Uh... We are, are we had a location scout, uh, Jesse, and he found it, and uh, it was the first place we saw in a two-day <laughs> scout. We were just blown away. One, first of all, it's like it's cinematic. Like you put a camera on it, and you're 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 good to go. Movie's good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's got the interior design is like it is very like we're all we're in that cabin so much. So it's like there's different looks for each wall, and and our. Uh, production designer even like added a little bit of uh, texture, texture to it and things. And then you can turn the camera certain ways and all of a sudden like the, the beams on the ceiling are like a little more menacing and like all of a sudden it changes and this mm. wall of windows that's so picturesque at the beginning is like really scary later because they're so vulnerable. And they're just in this, this glass exposed house in the middle of the night where you can, I mean really from the outside, you just see the right lights in. on, you can just yeah. see into all of it. Yeah. Um, so it is pretty scary, but yeah, it was not only that, but it also checked the boxes that had a pond It had the barn um, And it had like a perfect amount of space for production too, which is huge It's not obviously the first thing you think about you obviously want the look and all that stuff But, um, but, but we, it's hugely important to an indie film to have a space be production friendly because you know you you otherwise you're just um 
you're going to lose time, you know, if yeah. you have to move around too much to get to lunch or whatever, like you, you lose time. And we flipped it around. It was, th that was actually the back of the, of the cabin and the front is like, it's, it's a little lower and that's where we put the production vans and stuff. So the, the driveway that they come up on is, I'm sorry. I think FedEx is knocking at my door. <laughs> I have to just get this. I'll sorry. keep talking about this driveway you while Eleanor talking. accepts her like IRS Hi. package. Um, uh, so, so the driveway that they pull up on goes to nowhere. It's, it's nothing, but that we, so we just flipped the whole thing around and it became a perfect production hub. It was, it was a miracle of a location. Sorry. That's uh, good. You got it. Home office stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you get those packages when they come, they put the slips on your doors. And I, they, I, I, they're just lost signature. to the factory. <laughs> I ignored the first knock. I was like, I know what this is. Maybe it'll just go away. <laughs> he knocked again and was like, all right, I'm going to accept this. We have to support the USPS. It's FedEx. We have to support FedEx. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Haley, should I do it? Do you have anything else? I mean, I feel like anything I'm going to ask is what... I have one question that's like spoilers. It doesn't matter. Let's do it. Let's, All right. Let's keep, let's All right. Keep crazy. I, I will tell you one thing I was very amused by watching it again the Alexa went off once at the, at the very beginning scene. And I'm like, oh, yes. like it did that thing where it went off and it's like, I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> and there was full Whitney Houston music yes. blasting through my house. <laughs> and I kind of loved it. That's yes. awesome. And then I, yes, then I shut else. it off and watched the rest. <laughs> yeah. Somebody else told us that the other day. Alexa. And they said they paused the movie just to enjoy the moment of yeah. listening to Whitney Houston for a bit, which is so funny. If you have an Alexa, you get Whitney Houston. We uh, have Google, so we get Moby Dick. <laughs> it starts reading Moby Dick to us. All throughout post that happened. Yeah. <laughs> I really do watch. think that there's like an added layer of interactivity that filmmakers <laughs> yeah. are not tapping into it. Like it's almost <laughs> like a choose your own adventure depending on what product yeah. you want. <laughs> it's exactly. an Easter egg. It's a little scary as I explain that, but I'm into yes. it. It's like right. smell -a vision Well, it's also, I think, you know, it goes along with the sort of themes of the movie and thinking about like technology and being plugged in. And, and all of a sudden you're reminded in the middle of the movie that something is listening. <laughs> 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 all right, guys, for everyone out there who has not seen Save Yourselves, the movie mm -hmm. is hitting theaters nationwide on October 2nd, and then you're going to be able to watch it on digital on October 6th. So check it out. I feel like if you couldn't already tell by this conversation, Haley and I are really into it. Go watch it. But for everybody who has seen the movie, now you can stay. Because it is spoiler time. We're going to talk about <laughs> spoilers in the movie. Um, Haley, do you want to go with your question first? Sure. And this is like, is it spoilers? I don't know. Let's be safe. It's not. <laughs> but you guys brought up very specifically uh, sourdough bread making and gardening, which are like the pandemic <laughs> activities. Yeah. Uh, where did those come from? And did you get super weirded out when suddenly everyone on the internet was doing those two things. Yeah. That was certainly weird. Yeah, that's right. Jack says, I want to start a community garden. Start a community garden. <laughs> yeah. We have started a somewhat of a community garden in our yeah, apartment we building. Herb garden. We started a little herb garden in pandemic together, which yeah. is nice. Um, it yeah. is weird. The sourdough especially is weird because um, we were concerned that people wouldn't get that joke. Yeah, like he did, he really says like, he says sourdough at some point at the beginning, but then he just yeah. refers to it as his starter, his starter. And like people like, aren't going to know what this is. Um, and but, it's a plot point. It's like yeah. <laughs> so, so we were, we, we just yeah. went with it, hoping for the best, and you know, like we did obviously test audiences and stuff, and people got it at that point. So yeah, everyone fun. has at least a friend with a sourdough starter, right? At this point, yeah. yeah, we have we have one friend with a sourdough. starter. Now we have like fifty friends yeah. with a sourdough starter. Yeah. We have still personally avoided sourdough starter ourselves we have not gone down but, that road but i started making kombucha a couple weeks ago <laughs> so alex is now <laughs> one of those guys how <laughs> what is a guy i so, just started drinking kombucha during lockdown for like extra energy okay. and health reasons yeah. but they have run out of my kombucha at the store so now i can't get it oh, no. I know. Where do you oh. live? Wait, do you live in, I forget where you live, LA? I, I live in LA, but I've been in New York for a very, very long time now. Oh, you've oh, been wow. in New York. I was going to say we could bring some over. <laughs> Homemade. The way it works is there's a living or Mail it away. Yeah, yeah. we'll ship it for, yeah, flash frozen like a fish. FedEx. We got to start uh, FedEx. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a, it's as disgusting as a sourdough starter. It's a little, it's like a living organism. It's just like 
it sits in the kitchen in a, in a bowl of tea. It looks like, um, like human tissue, like you're growing <laughs> human tissue in a jar. It's yeah. disgusting. Right. Um, and yeah, like skin, <laughs> it's like yeah. harvest, harvesting skin. Uh, Alex, but we save like, you know, 10 bucks a week or whatever. So. Yeah. From, from not, uh, from not, not yeah, buying, buying it. It's, uh, it is good. I have to say it's gross, but it is really tasty, the homemade stuff. The one thing that was really fun was the day that Jared Leto came back from oh, yeah. doing a meditation retreat and he didn't know about the pandemic. <laughs> we got a lot of texts that day. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, I, I'm going to say that I could not keep my starter alive, but I did keep a garden alive. I don't know how that works. Doesn't well one seem way harder? <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where do you live? Are you in LA? I, I am in LA. Yeah. Yeah. You can keep a nice garden in LA. Where are, you, are you in LA? Yeah. We're, yeah, we're in Los Feliz. We we uh we lived in New York for about ten years and then moved here right after we wrote the movie, just mm -hmm. in time to go back and <laughs> to make it. the movie. Yeah. <laughs> The uh the heat wave did literally burn some of my plants alive. Like now oh, they're wow. just yeah just yeah Plus, but otherwise mm. california is lovely side rant i'm just very mm -hmm. proud of my garden i can't help it <laughs> i don't so even great. want to think about what my plants in la look like right now oh, oh no oh my cat sitter has been watering them every so often but i feel like it's just not nearly enough yeah, yeah it's it's a lot just about the the love i think that you give yeah. them you got to make sure that your guy, sitter has it's really exploded love. in California. Yeah. <laughs> Killing it. it. Yes. Wow. Like every every <laughs> six weeks, that. it's like. <laughs> <laughs> so Haley brought up some stuff from your movie that's actually happening right now. I'm curious, since lockdown and all of this began, have you rethought what your two characters kind of do in this crazy, what they would have done in this crazy situation that we like literally are uh, in right now? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, one thing that we've been thinking about lately is that when we wrote the movie, it was um, it was very much about like, oh, there's all these bad things happening in the world and none of us are really paying attention to them because we're just like so consumed by our phones. But in the last six months, that feels like it's taken a pretty big shift yeah. to people really paying attention and really caring and doing active things to try to change, um, change yeah. the bad things that are happening in the world. So um, that seems like... Like a little dated now. The, I yeah, guess. the movie became more relevant and like less relevant at the same time. <laughs> yeah, because it seems like you know they they might Jack and Sue now in twenty twenty might yeah, be, be a little there. bit more yeah, yeah. involved <laughs> than than they are. But, um, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I guess yeah. I guess if they if they knew what we know now, maybe they would be more prepared. Maybe they'd have some water, you know, <laughs> yeah. saved somewhere, or would have brought a few more survival tools with them upstate. Yeah, they definitely, yeah, Sue would probably organize, uh, had it like, um, like all the things that they need to do. Uh, and Jack would probably dream about farm, like having a farm. Like, yeah. like it's like, oh, now is the time we really got to get that farm. Going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jack. They'd probably be planning to move upstate if it was, yes, if it was yeah. happening in 2020, not just going for a week. Right. I do feel like that cabin getaway sounds real, real good right now. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> So what about the very end of the movie? Did you always know you wanted to end it with with that exact same thing happening? Or did you ever consider, I don't know, like I guess the only way I can describe it is maybe a more traditional ending to a disaster movie. Yeah, like where they figure out what's what, what makes the poofs tick and then they defeat them. <laughs> yeah. That was, yeah, I mean, that was always what we were trying to not do. Um, and yeah, in terms of the the actual ending ending, that was sort of always the plan. It was, yeah. I remember like when we first sat down to start writing the script, I was like, I get it all. Like what's going to happen in the end? And Alex was like, well, they're going to go into space. And I was like, Oh yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think you, you explain it well. It, 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 always, it always seemed like just like the, the appropriate thing to happen to these characters. Like it just felt like they, they get exactly what they deserve, which is not like a violent death or anything, but it's just mm -hmm. like being cast into the unknown. And uh, I also like we also just thought that this um, that there was just this nice symmetry between the first scene where you see them and it's this like really stark image of two characters like in a bubble like like floating through space like completely fucked <laughs> you know what I mean and then the <laughs> end of the movie is 
exactly the same thing, just literal. They're just literally floating through space and into into the unknown. And we and we also like this this like growing up um, family metaphor. So like they get they get married and then they have a baby and then they're like it's this great image of just like a new family going into the unknown, which I think is what happens when you have a baby. You're just like, oh, all of a sudden we have a baby, we have to keep alive, and where are we going? Yeah. <laughs> But we, um, yeah, I mean, so that was always like where we wanted it to end up. And then obviously like the hard part is how you get there. Um, that changed a lot. That changed through through many drafts. And, and it was like pretty late draft that where it really clicked that Alex had this idea to um, that their phones should come back on and that's how they get trapped, which we just thought was very funny as soon as you sort of had that idea because they've learned so much, you know, throughout the movie and they've come together and they've, you know, they've worked hard to care for something outside of themselves and they've you know lost their yeah uh, their, they've their, shed their ego right, or whatever exactly. and they're like we don't matter and it's like oh they've 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 found their bonnet in a way <laughs> it's like and then um and then their phones come back to life and it's just immediately like oh check twitter check facebook you know like and then as this bubble is growing around them um you know and then they they get sent into space so they're it's just so sort close. of like yeah they're very close and then of course, we all just ultimately fall back into the trap of our phones. Yeah, it was a classic tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever think about what a Save Yourself sequel would look like, both from their perspective? Like, they're, they're off into the unknown. Do they actually yeah. arrive anywhere and what do they do? But also, what is then the state of Earth being overrun by poops? Yeah. yeah, yeah, we think about that too, because I don't think it's like Earth explodes, Earth goes on, it's just going to be a very like strange and unlivable place. And there will be some humans left behind, you yeah. know, like not everyone died or get got captured. Yeah. Um, and so then it's like, what does that look like when you're all of a sudden on a planet without, you know, assuming at this point, like old systems of communication are broken down, you know, they have to like rebuild and, and learn how to, you know, grow their own food. and Learn that 19th century lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. That everyone's trying to <laughs> trying to have. We have uh, yeah, we have all sorts of ideas, and like we're uh, thinking about all of this for like maybe a TV show. Yeah, <laughs> it's fun to it's fun to think about all those and we, and possibilities. We, we thought about like when we were writing too, because it's like it's just so much fun to think about like all these other characters and what their movie would be, and then like where they go and what happens to them and and what the myth like we have a, like a deep mythology for the poofs mm -hmm. and. Uh, which we won't go into now because it's really Silly. boring to talk yeah. about. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, you know, if we ever make anything in the same world of Save Yourselves, it'd be fun to start peppering in some of the mythology yeah. stuff in a way that we didn't, we deliberately didn't do in the movie, but I think, you know, you can have an opportunity to do that later maybe. Um, but in terms of where Jack and Sue go, we always think of that they, they are, they will land on a, on a planet that, um, you know, is uninhabitable to, to humans obviously so they have to be, live inside little bubbles of atmosphere to for themselves to be safe there and maybe it's that somewhat somewhat zoo-like but um but maybe not so menacing yeah that, that, that they they have everything they need so they're kind of fine but yeah. they're not really fine <laughs> <laughs> kind of like real life yeah <laughs> more into the uh the poof sequel yeah, yeah. <laughs> There was something you said earlier too that it, you know, uh, Haley knows this. It kept making me think of what uh, Mike Dougherty did with Trick or Treat and the the Sam spinoffs for different Halloweens for different uh, holidays. Like there's so, there's something about like a oh. animated series or yes. or a comic yeah. book that I feel like. I don't yes, know. definitely a comic yeah. book would be awesome. A graphic novel mm -hmm. complimentary uh, issue for the movie just about poops would be great. Yeah, just they, from their perspective. They all have different personalities, yeah. Mm -hmm. The cabin poof, the, the brown poof that's in their cabin has a whole story. Yeah, he's, he's the most fleshed out poof that we, that we have for sure. It, do any of the individual, I'm so obsessed with them, I can't help it. Do any of the individual poofs have names or on set when there were many, do you just refer to them yeah. as, as all the poofs? Um, it was just mostly like the cabin poof, the woods poof, and the roof poof were yeah. the main ones. The roof poofs, when there are like many of them on the roof, there was actually only like maybe three or four that we filmed on the day. And yeah, then, with what with like wires, and they were actually moving, and there were like seven puppeteers moving them and stuff. Um, and then we uh, added more. Yeah, <laughs> in post. we asked our VFX supervisor. We were like, "Do you think you could?" make more poops and he on made the one roof. that shoots like shoots and sticks to this to the roof. so funny because and that that one especially we think is so funny i mean we're talking about micro detail here that you probably don't remember but um it's very funny to us because 
the way the poof sort of like lands on the roof, it kind of bounces. Like, like it looks like a mistake. It looks very practical because it's like, why would you VFX something in that looks like a mistake? <laughs> but like but it it's so didn't funny. Stick to landing. Yeah, it really just was like. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Jeff really got into the mindset of the poofs and and really knew how to kind of like make them move around in a funny way. Well, I. I'm curious, you know, you said you guys had the idea of the poof early on because it needed to be something that could fit in the house. But um, when it comes to when we finally see like how deadly they are, what was the process of determining how they kill, how that would look? Because you certainly don't maybe expect it to be so fast and so fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, we, we brainstormed that a lot. That, that, yeah. All that changed a bunch. Yeah, I remember the first thing was like when the poof is in the cabin, it was like what will be a fun, surprising way for it to get out of the cabin. And so we thought of this sort of like, you know, stretchy tube suction thing. Spider-Man. Like, yeah, yeah, that it moves around. Um, and so then once we sort of thought of that as a way that it moves, it was also like, well, what if that's a way that it kills yeah, <laughs> as well? And drinks, yeah. And drinks like and does everything. So it's it, the... Uh, you know, in our minds, what it is, is this tube that can kind of suction onto a thing. And then because a, a poof is actually like a, basically a ball of gas covered in little As antenna, you might have guessed, of course, yeah. you understand, um, <laughs> that we figured that it's, it has an ability to sort of like shoot out like a high pressure air bullet basically through anything with, with quite precision. Yeah. So it can, you know, uh, bust through glass or steel or a human's body so you made it a bone. Men sequel is what you're telling me <laughs> yeah right it's um the, the the scene on the road i mean we just we didn't want it to be like really gory i guess um of Which a movie but we just shocking. we knew that we needed yeah. like a moment where you see people die you know you see how people get killed to really all of a sudden have a fear of like oh no this is really bad because up mm -hmm. until that point you've seen people die but you haven't seen how and so it's like maybe not as scary until that moment um but those yeah those the stunt people were so good and so so i mean it was just such a bizarre thing to try and explain to them like okay so the tube is gonna stick to your head and then it's as if it's exploding on the other side you know like trying to explain the the the, the process of how a poof kills a person yeah. <laughs> but they they were just like very on board with it and did great deaths i thought like just yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was great yeah we mostly just wanted to keep the poop surprising mm -hmm. oh what'd you say i feel like i'm too obsessed with all the poop backstory now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can think of, but just because you brought this up and also another thing earlier on in the interview since lockdown i've gotten in the habit of watching things that i usually wouldn't with with my parents and my mom watched this with me the other day and oh, wow. I just like I assumed it wasn't really going to be her thing but she was very into it and the two things that she said was those two characters are so likable and whatever it is I need to know what happens to them and she also like I'm flat out telling you the truth right now she said exactly what you just did where she likes them so much and also she felt the threat the entire time and like oh, great the combination so oh that's so nice yeah that's so nice yeah we we had a similar feeling about like we we're like this is very specific about like you have to be 30 th between 30 and 37 to like <laughs> uh and, and then it's and not for me apparently <laughs> yeah eleanor's 38 she's over the hill she can't she won't like it yeah uh but you turned 38 after. All right, all right, all right. All right. Anyway, uh, your point. Uh, my point is at Sundance, this, this, uh, this, it was a uh, uh, like a. It was, she a was mom. one of the volunteers, wasn't she? Yeah, volunteer. Yeah. She's probably in her 60s, like our parents' age, and 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 then her teenage or little older son or whatever. And she was like, "We both loved the movie," and she was like, "You wrote this movie for me." <laughs> it was really sweet. She was like, "I ah, like the phone and the." It is. It is so nice. Like when, yeah, when. Uh, many people can relate to it because yeah. it, it does feel very specifically Brooklyn 30s but um yeah, yeah that's nice it's that's nice. nice to know thank that's you nice. <laughs> I have one more thing off wait I have one more poof question one more poof question. <laughs> I swear I'll leave it alone so the poof the poofs come to earth if humans didn't get so riled up do you think that they would have been just flat out killing mm. machines or would they have just drank all the ethanol and then gone about their business mm. They Interesting were there question. To kill, I think. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> yeah. that there was any way around that happening. I mean, really, the only reason that the cabin poof doesn't 
kill them is because of the Kevin Poof's personal backstory. But um, <laughs> we we see we like that there was this this one Poof that's sort of like a, like more of a pacifist, more of a did we say this already? More of a scientist type, and who just no. looks looks at. Um, you know, is observing Jack and Sue and because they don't appear to know what's going on in the rest of the world, it's this perfect opportunity to just watch them, which is why he kills the, the other people who, you know, come near the cabin, like Raph and the guy in the woods, um, you know, who, who threatened to sort of disrupt this, this perfect uh, case study. Yeah. He doesn't kill Jack and Sue and, you know, and obviously when they approach him with the tongs, <laughs> with the fireplace tongs, there's sort of like a moment of, Okay, I guess I'm getting out of here. I didn't really come here for a fight. Um, but the other poofs definitely came with a, a mission. Most of them came with a mission yeah, to kill. We didn't have a chance. Yeah. Like Gizmo compared to the rest of the ground ones. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. All right. That's right. Gavin Poof is yeah. officially my favorite poof. Yeah. yeah He's mine Gizmo. Too. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess now Perry has inspired another poof question from me. <laughs> We're just hooked <laughs> on the poofs, guys. Um, so like in your mind, do they go from planet to planet, like locusing up the resources? Uh, exactly. Yes, yeah, you, you got it. it. <laughs> they're they're kind of like a weapon that's like on it. It's like an autonomous weapon goes around. Mm -hmm. Kelly, as you said stop. that question, I heard it in like the Independence Day voice because I'm pretty sure that's how President Whitmore <laughs> explains how the aliens go from planet to planet. They go from planet to planet. <laughs> sucking up the resources. All of my science is based on Independence Day, but it's certainly same. Possible. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I would like. I definitely am not a science person, so for a long time I was like, why ethanol? Why ethanol? Oh, they're gas. Yeah. <laughs> it's in everything gas and booze yeah yeah um well i was gonna ask jumping off of perry's lovely mother's sentiment um <laughs> hi mom and <Nims. laughs> uh you do care and you are nervous and then you throw a baby in the mix <laughs> and uh, i'm curious to what extent you were comfortable playing up that fear. Was there a concern that once you add a baby that maybe they feel safe because this movie doesn't feel like the kind of movie that's gonna off a baby? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Until they lose the baby. Um, <laughs> yeah, right, we would never have done that for sure. I think there's this thing where like, I don't know, when you watch a movie, you, 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 know, you can feel worried for somebody and also at the same time think like, well, I'm not gonna kill this character. I think yeah. like, the, like the little girl and aliens or something. You're like, Oh, I really like, you're really worried about her, but you're like, they're not going to kill that little girl. Like if you think but about it for a second, moment to moment, there's like a little bit scary. of a disconnect. Yeah. 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 We, we, we wanted to like, to, to make people like worried because <laughs> it's, the baby's very vulnerable and then they just leave it in the woods and just yeah. let it go. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is, it does feel like it adds a totally different layer to the movie when there is a baby especially I mean honestly every time we were even just in the edit of the movie every time we would get to that scene it was like I forgot that there was a real baby in the movie and then it was every time they opened the yeah. car door and the baby's there it's like oh my god we had a real baby <laughs> in this movie it's so yeah. crazy to just like remember that I mean you know we shot it in the woods and we were in like the areas of the woods that were very close to houses it was not I mean, as three, remote as it looks and there's three, three of them when you see it in the movie there's no like yeah. there's no pretense there it's like that is a real living baby that they have to deal with now and it's really terrifying to us <laughs> I, i'm just terrified of babies in general so yeah uh, yeah yeah Hi. um Haley, do you have any more questions before we ask our our big two our big two. Big two. I actually know. I know their answer to one of them. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I think I because I think we talked about this when I when I brought up my cat's go bag. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. Cat go bag. I'll, I'll get this. I'll get this one out of the way first. We always ask all of our our guests. Do you have any pets? Um, we do not have pets. No, just we just plants. have a lot of plants. But I had pets growing up. I had yeah, two I had dogs, dogs. Two yeah. cats. Uh, two frogs, a turtle. We had a, a, a lamb. Sheep, right? A lamb at a, at a point. <laughs> Grew where, up with a lot of you, pets. Where did you grow up that you had so many of those animals? Um, in Adelaide, Australia, just in in the suburbs, we had that many animals. But we had a, a sheep farm, um, and 
occasionally like some uh some baby sheep would get rejected by the mother sheep and we would have to take them home and feed them from a bottle <laughs> that was highlight of my childhood for sure <laughs> getting to cradle old baby baby lamb so cute <laughs> it would have been a highlight for me yeah <laughs> that was very cute all right Haley, you want the next one well yeah you can't have them both no <laughs> I, would I would never uh, um, no we always ask everybody to sort of wrap things up um what what have you seen or read uh, or played we're very open anything in the genre sphere doesn't have to be new it can be something old or something new anything you would recommend to people when they sign off from this that they should go check that out mm. the, the documentary thing that we've been doing wait did you say it has to be sci-fi though? oh, oh it has no. to be genre uh, genre sphere we genre we sphere. do love genre but uh it's your, oh, yeah, yeah. your show well, guys well what have we been watching in i mean we have been always watching a lot of uh, we re Eleanor had never seen Twelve Monkeys, and, and that's oh, one yeah. of my favorite movies. And it is still very good. That was great. We watched so another great. and Brazil as well. But um, tw yeah, Twelve Monkeys is obviously very relevant right now because it's a about a pandemic. A pandemic. Yeah. Um, but you know, a it's actually pandemic. about a pandemic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, that was really fun to watch. Um, recommend uh, revisiting Twelve Monkeys. So the the guy who came up with Tribbles for Star Trek, David Gerald, wrote a, a sci-fi book called The Man Who Folded Himself. And I read that in quarantine and it's fantastic. It's like a time travel movie about this guy who keeps like, he just ends up like living with versions of himself and it gets a little, uh, uh, he has like some romances with himself. It's like a fantastic book. It's great and I highly recommend it. I also, I do want to know what documentary you were going to say. Oh, oh we, it's not one documentary, but we've been doing this thing where we watch a documentary and then immediately follow it with the documentary now version of that documentary. <laughs> yeah. And it's so fun. It's fantastic. So we did the Marina Abramovich one. We did the Sondheim documentary, mm -hmm. Dear Dreams of Sushi. I did uh, the War Room. Right. It's, and oh, the, what's the Bible? Oh, what's the, the salesman. salesman. And it'll just, it's just a great night. Because then yeah. you're, you're watching these great documentaries and then you're just like really excited about how they're going to get made fun of. Yeah. <laughs> and then the, <laughs> you know, the documentary it. now version is obviously only 30 minutes, right? Yeah. I think. So, so it's so not it's really, like, it's not yeah. quite a double feature, but, yeah. um, but it's very enjoyable. It's a big, yeah, it's wonderful a big. idea. I actually, <laughs> I have one uh, very special sign off question just for you guys. Do you guys now have a go bag? Oh yes, we do. Oh good. We have two we have <laughs> earthquake kits that Eleanor bought, one for the house, one for the car. It's, you know, I, we bought the kit, you know, that has all the important hand crank radio and all that stuff that you need. But then we've filled it with other things as well, like clothes, contact lenses, like we, little specific things. That contact we're lenses was, need. yeah, that was a big one. We, yeah. got, we got those in there. Um, one is like beside the bed right now. It used to be under a cabinet, but we, there was an earthquake the other day. And yeah. So I was like, let's keep this beside the bed. But then you ran out under the, under the table and left the, the earthquake. Actual, I know, I really failed. <laughs> I actually have one more movie question that's been on yeah. my mind. I, I was very impressed. I told you guys that you did the contact thing, contact thing at all because that's always something that makes yes. me think I have a lesser chance during a disaster. Yeah. But what yes. inspired the bit about her eating her contacts? Because mm. I have not been able to <laughs> stop thinking about that. <laughs> I don't know where you got that from. I, like sometimes you're just walking around and you just like talk to yourself in your head and it was just a conversation I had in my own head. It and was, then I thought it was funny and it didn't, it was, it was like, we just put it in the, we put it in the movie and then it fit and it worked. It was just like a funny thing, you know, and we think that Sue really does eat her contacts. That is a, it's a, just a strange thing that she does. But the weird part <laughs> was there's, um, we were talking, I, remember, I can't remember if it was post-production or in pre, but um, Ben, our production supervisor, <laughs> came up to me once and he's like, oh, I love the bit about when she eats the contact lens. And she's like, do you guys do, you guys do that? I do that. I do that. And we're like, what, Ben, no, don't eat your contact lenses. You're like, Ben, we don't do like, that. Like, not often. He just had done it in the past. I think he said, like, when he was too tired to like take them and put them in, but he just, I, I mean, it's bizarre, but, um, it's gotta be something people do. I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's a Reddit. 
Yeah, tread on this. I'm surprised with how much I've thought about it. I haven't gone down like the Google rabbit hole of trying to figure yeah. out if it was a thing. Yeah. As a contact lens wearer myself, like I cannot yeah. get it out of my head. Yeah. <laughs> I would, I, I would, I would never. Have you ever <laughs> held them? You're not in even your... curious now, Perry. Oh, this is Alex is almost eaten. Have you ever held them in your mouth, like when <laughs> no. they fall out of your eye? I'm, like you're, I'm very you know? like clean i'm like neuro i'm like ocd yeah. and clean it would it would terrify me to put it in my mouth yeah. and back of my it's, eye you have to gross. you have to rinse it after that you can't just put it straight back in your eye you can't just <laughs> rinse it with water no like, with contact solution oh, right. it's just yeah. to keep it yeah. moist until you can get to contact solution i, I run under water well. for that reason but even that bothers me when i'm not using proper contact lens solution yeah yeah, yeah. no it's rough it's no. it's gross and um very funny. Yeah. Think about it, people really do it. Well, now we know what I'm Googling right after this. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today. Before we let Thanks. you go, do you have any uh, social media handles that you want to share mm. with our, our viewers so they can follow yeah. you in your work? The, the movie handle is, is at Save Yourselves Movie. And on Twitter, it's at Save Yourself MOV because the, the, the thing was too long. 15 for Twitter, characters. I guess. Of, yeah. it's, it's at Save Yourself MOV. Yeah. Um, John, yeah. Yeah. Sunitha Mani at Sunitha Mani. At right? John P. Reynolds. At John yeah. P. Reynolds, and then yeah. I'm Albert Fishhat. But and I'm Eleanor Margaret. Yeah. We we mostly we don't we're not as fun though as John. Yeah. And we don't have very many followers. Uh, but follow the movie and and tell your friends if you if you like it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll second that. Thank you guys again. Thank you. Haley, where can everyone find you in your work? Oh, you can find me on Twitter at Haley Fouch, on Instagram at Haystack McGroovy, and on Collider. And I'm at P. Nemiroff on Twitter and Instagram. That's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. You have officially survived the witching hour.